Hey everyone, it's Cell from Celljoy and I'm back with you for another video and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Editor's Keys overlay for Logic Pro for the iPad. And um, if I can just switch my accent for a moment. This wonderful company from the UK called Editor's Keys. Now, some of you have been doing your exploring and going through your sessions and learning some of the shortcuts, and this product makes it so easy to access so many of the key functions of Logic Pro on the iPad. Um, while still allowing you to use your multi-touch, you can access some very quick functions right here on this overlay. So without further ado, I want to get into a few of these key functions here. Um, the iPad case that I'm, or the keyboard case that I'm using is the Magic Keyboard for the 12.9 uh, M1 iPad Pro. And um, they have available on their website several different sizes uh, for um, your iPad or even your iMac or even your laptop. No matter what device you're using, they have an overlay just for you. I'm gonna show you a few of the key functions right here for this program. And um, we're gonna start with the play button. How about we get started with the play button and then I will take you through some of these key functions. All right, so let's get started with some of our basic functions. We're gonna start with the basic commands that are in white on our keyboard cover here from Editor's Keys. Let's go ahead and start with the space bar, which is our play and pause function. Okay, now at the bottom of my screen, you can see I have an audio track here that's loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and arm the track. And as you can see, I have a little bit of signal coming in on my microphone. So let's bring up the fader by pressing V to bring up the side fader. Okay, I can now see that I have signal coming in on that track. Now let's say I just don't wanna see one fader, but I wanna see all of them. Let's get to the mixer window with one touch. Let's press X. All right, now we have access to all of our faders at the bottom. And of course, if we wanna expand the screen, we go ahead and expand the screen. And then of course, with one touch, we can get rid of the mixer window completely. And we're right back at our range window. I love that feature, being able to toggle um, the, the different windows on and off with just one keystroke. Now let's take a look at our plugins, shall we? Uh, we can access our plugin window simply by pressing the key B. And here we can see what plugins are loaded on this particular track. Now using our directional keys to the right, we're gonna go ahead and go up to select a previous track. And as you can see, my plugin window is still open, displaying which plugins are on this particular track. Now let's say I wanted to solo that track. I'm gonna go ahead and hit S. My plugin window is still open, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, expand and take a look at this plugin. Look at that, it happens to be the Blue Beast. You're gonna be checking out one of my videos on this particular plugin from Gospel Musicians. 
Now once you're done previewing your plugin, you can go ahead and hit B to get rid of that. Now if I want to unsolo the track, go ahead and press S. Now currently my track is set up to cycle. You can see at the top I have the cycle feature enabled in yellow. I can turn that on and off by hitting the C button. Let's engage it again. Now with any one of your tracks selected, you can go ahead and mute a region by pressing M. This will mute the entire track. Now you ha also have the option to loop certain regions by pressing the L button. When you press the L button, you will see there that that region, that last region, becomes duplicated and that will loop throughout your session for as long as you need it to. Now let's go up to the top layer of the keyboard and look at some of the functions there. I'm going to access one of my drum tracks here so that we can play around with some of the drum sounds. I'm going to go ahead to my kick drum track and I'm going to go back to the beginning of the track just by pressing return and that will take me right to the beginning of the track. Now, um, the P button allows me to access the play surface and the play surface is a place where you can use the multi-touch screen to enter in MIDI information, whether you would like to play notes or whether you would like to use the drum pad. So once you have pressed P, it will bring up the play surface window. You can fully expand that. And then once you're done playing with the drum pads, you can go ahead and hit P and it will bring you right back to your arrange window. Next, let's take a look at the inspector window. You can go ahead and hit I and this will take you to the inspector window for your track. Now, depending on what track you're on, the inspector window will look a little bit different. You can use the inspector to edit your regions, or you can go ahead and use your trackpad to select the track option. And there you can make transposing, quantizing, um, you, can label the, you can label your track, you can change the color of it, how it displays, um, you can change the MIDI settings for that particular track. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select my audio track at the bottom and I have my inspector window open. And from here, I can make changes to the track. Here we have an audio announcement track that I made for my church and um, take a listen to the audio. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bring It to the Block event. We are the Well Church, New Jersey and we are so excited to bring this event and other community events right to you. So if we would like to edit this, we can of course use our um, inspector here and go to the gain plugin and use multi-touch or use the trackpad to make gain changes to this track. And as I'm dialing this gain down, you can see the waveforms get smaller and as I dial them back up, they will also get bigger. So this is a quick way to get to the inspector. And again, you're using a combination of the keyboard shortcuts, using the editor's keys keyboard cover, and then you're also using a little bit of multi-touch as well. You have the freedom to interact with Logic Pro on the iPad um, any way you like. All right. so. That's one of the key features that I like about the editor's keys. It's getting me into these quick editing functions very quickly and very easily. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. We have the ability to bring up the browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck away the inspector by just pressing the same key I used to bring it in, which was the I key, I just got rid of it. And I'm going to bring up my browser now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Y, and when I hit Y, the browser pops up to the left 
and now I'm able to um, access instrument patches. I can load um, audio patches, loops, samples, um, any plugin presets, um, MIDI patterns. I can bring all of those things into my session and I didn't have to fumble around to try and remember what the icon was for that. It gives it right to me on this keyboard cover. Really quick and easy. Just go ahead and hit Y to get back to your arrange window. Now, are you someone that likes to work with live loops and you like to create that way? You can access the live loops area just by simply hitting one key, T. T will take you right there and there you can access um, a vast array of logics, live loops that you can uh, play with um, and use to create a track or create a song. Um, you can also uh, create your own and record right in here um, using your existing tracks or perhaps load whatever track you'd like and um, start working on your live loops. And to get back to your range window, simply hit T to go back. So let's go ahead and try to record a new track. I'm going to use my uh, key commands here. All right, so I have this track selected at the bottom. I want to mute this one and I want to go down to the next one. So I've hit M to mute the current one and then I'm going to hit the directional key to go down to the next one and I would like to record on this track. Okay, so my input is already set and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit R. And as I hit R, and I'm gonna bring out my fader to make sure I have signal coming in. Yes, I do. Fantastic. So now you can see I have audio coming into this track and I've created a recording. Good, so now I'm going to expand this. You can use your uh, multi-touch ge gestures to expand. Let's go down to the bottom and take a look at my track. And I see I have some waveforms there. They're kind of quiet for me because I'm recording um, this video using different settings. So what I'd like to do now is to just quickly um, go into the inspector. I'm gonna press I and I'm gonna make some changes to this region. I'm gonna tap the region using my trackpad. I'm gonna to go to that gain function and I can go ahead and dial that up just by rolling this wheel. There we go. And I've made some quick adjustments to my newly recorded region. And this is, again, it's a quick, um, a quick process of one or two keystrokes to get to the inspector, to record a track, um, or even if I wanted to do some more editing, I can click on E to get to the editor. And this will allow me to do some automation and also I can do some more trimming, some more fine editing in this window as well. And of course, if I wanna see more space, I would use the expand window just to make that a little bit bigger. Now, you also have the ability to switch which area you are focusing on as you're making edits. If you press the tab key, it's going to switch focus. As you can see, the arrange window became lit up in gray around the edges. Now, if you press tab again, now your editing function or your main function is going to be in the bottom window. So depending on how many windows you have open, it will allow you to cycle through where you are making your changes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, pinch gesture just to bring the range window together. I'm gonna select E just to get rid of my editor window. And I can explain to you my first, very first session in working for Logic Pro on the iPad, I was confused because Logic does not have the ability to uh, spread out windows into floating windows. They kind of slide in and they slide out. They kind of pop in and pop out when you need them. So, um, but this keyboard cover with these uh, pre-mapped functions allows us to really master that process and not get lost in the sauce. Okay, so this was one of my first sessions. I had my 
mixer window open. I had my plug-in window open. Uh, my fader was out and the browser and what else? The play surface, it was a nightmare, a complete mess. Uh, my inspector, that was open as well. So, and also the editor, I was trying to figure out where everything was and perhaps this is what's happened to you. Well, with this keyboard cover, with the pre-mapped functions, I have an easy way to quickly put things away. I can put the mixer away, the fader, the plugins, everything. I can clear that out and I have a quick function, quick functions that I can get to, um, to really manage my workflow. So far, I love this keyboard. Um, there are some additional functions in there. Um, you can hold down Command S to save. If you would like to duplicate a track, you can go ahead and hit Command D and it will allow you to duplicate that track. And if you would like to um, undo the last edit or the last uh, function that you utilized in Logic, go ahead and hit Command Z and it will undo that last um, function that you did. Now, if you would like to delete a track or delete a row, you can go ahead and hit Command Delete at the top right, and it will ask you if you want to delete the track and the regions. This is a quick way to just wipe out whatever is on that track really easy and really quickly. You go ahead and hit Yes, and then you've gone ahead and cleared that out. Now, as you can see, there are a few more functions here on the keypad that are in pink or they are in red. Um, to access those, you will need to be in the file selector window. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the file selector window and you can see here that uh, I am in the large icon view. And from here, I can select different views. So if we look at the top row, um, you can see over here to the top left, there's the ability to switch the view to a list view. And you can press Command 2, and now we're in a list view. Now if you go ahead and press Command 3, it will get you into a column view, which allows you to access folders, subfolders, and individual files. But let's go back to the list view for just a moment and we can activate one of the other functions. I'm gonna use my directional key to select one of these files and I'm going to um, use the I function, but above it, it's not going to give me the inspector. If I hold down command, it's gonna give me information on this particular file. And this is where I get to pull up the information on this file. I can see when it was modified, uh, when it was last opened, um, how large it is, where it's located. Um, all of that information is very useful to me. Okay, so um, then if you'd like to quit the session, you're in your logic session, and you wanna get out of it, you can go ahead and hit Command W, and that will quit the application altogether and that will close it all together. So um, that'll allow you to, to quickly get back to any other apps that you had open. You can go ahead and click um, Command W. Now, these same functions um, in the file selector window will also work in your Finder app, okay? Let's take a look at a few functions that you can do in the Finder app um, of course, you have all of the icon view, the list view, the column view. Now you also ha have the option to press Command K and that will allow you to access a remote server. Or if you'd like to open a file, you can go ahead and hit Command O. Um, after you have selected the file that you would like to open, you would hit Command O and it would open up the file for you. Now, if you would like to go back, if you'd like to go back to a previous file or previous folder, go ahead and hit Command parentheses, and you can move backwards and forwards through recently selected files. Of course, there's the option to select all of the files in your folder and make edits. 
based on that. Um, editorskeys.com makes a number of keyboard covers for a variety of devices, whether it is a desktop, laptop, iPad, um, you can get a keyboard cover in the size for your device. Um, they also offer recording equipment and some hardware that you can buy to make your recordings even that much more effective and sounding great. So um, I would love for you guys to get your Logic Pro uh, for the iPad keyboard cover today. You can head over to editorskeys.com forward slash selljoy and you can get a discount on your own keyboard cover today. I'd love for you guys to be able to work through your sessions um, and improve your editing time. Editor's Keys is saying that it'll improve your editing time by roughly 40%. And I think that would be an amazing increase um, in productivity in our creative process. So go ahead over to editorskeys.com forward slash selljoy. You can use that discount code across the store for anything that you'd like to buy. And uh, just for watching today, you get a discount off of your purchase. And I've also linked the Logic Pro uh, for iPad keyboard cover so that you can head directly to that item if you would like to pick yours up today. Select the size that you want for your device and go ahead and get that ordered and begin creating and, and working through your sessions that much faster. I will tell you right now, I plan to use this keyboard cover for all of my sessions. It has really shortened my workflow time significantly, and I know it's gonna do the same for you. Listen, if this has been a help to you and it's gonna improve your workflow, go ahead and hit that like button, mash that notification bell, and um, let's stay connected. I'd love to bring you more videos. Thanks for watching today. Take care, we'll see you at the next one.